Good evening, campers. It's me, Kieran, and today we are going to discuss The Mistress of Spices by Chitra Banerjee Deva Karuni. An Indian author whose name comes up countless times if you search Indian literature to read, and one that had been recommended to me just like, like, like way too often. Possibly on par with the amount of recommendations for Anita Desai. So why did I finally delve into Deva Karuni's work? Well, it happened on a, a platform called, I don't know if anyone has ever heard of it, it's called Instagram. I don't really know how this started, but Chitra followed me. And I thought, this is an opportunity for you don't ask, you don't get. So I go into the DMs and I say, what, like, what book should I start off with? Chitra came back with this answer, which is not this book, but by sheer coincidence, the next day, um, one of my subscribers, Grace, had sent me this book. And I thought, this is a sign. This is a sign. So I dropped everything. I just began reading this. A round of applause for people who finally recommended a good book to me. It doesn't happen often, but boy, do I love it when it does. I feel as though it would be quite easy to badly execute the what is this book about? I think like the t the TLDR would be this is a romance novel with magical realism. But really what Diva Karuni does, which I completely loved about it, is that we have a clear metaphor, we have social critique, we have cultural critique, we have transatlanticism, we have, again, the romance story going throughout this, add myth, add race, add violence, and then tie it all up in magic realism. And this is pretty much the output that you're going to get. Now, magic realism, let's... Let's just talk about this, because someone's going to mention it in the comments that I'm not saying it correctly, okay? Magic realism is not fantasy. Say with me. Magic realism is not fantasy. Stop focusing and expecting too much from the magic element of it. This isn't a magic system. This doesn't have to be explained. The realism is equally as important as the magic. It's not magic realism, it's magic realism, realism. Realism means that it fits into our world. And no, it's not urban fantasy. That's different. You're focusing on the magic. This is not Percy Jackson and Lightning Thief. It ain't. It's just a given. It's not like, it's not really like a plot point. It doesn't have to be explained realism. I got that off my chest. So who is the Mistress of Spices? Well, the Mistress of Spices has an affinity to shock, horror, spoiler alert, spices. What the spices mean, the symbolism behind those, what they can cure and the ailments they are used for, is what the Mistress of Spices can harness. That's what she can use to her power. Under a ritual of fire, the First Mother asks the Mistress of Spices what you would like to be called because trust me doing this review mistress of spices is quite difficult to say in quick succession so she chooses the name tilotama and teal comes from the essence of sesame sesame when ground can cure the heart and that's going to be a pivotal moment within the book if you read it or if you go out to read this consider why the penultimate chapter is called Sesame. Though Tilotama chooses that name for what it represents and associates to her, First Mother is very quick to point out that this name has a connotation with one of the best dancers in Indra, the rain god's court. Tilotama's prowess and talent at dancing comes at a cost. Brahma advises her that be she the best dancer, that she can never give her heart to a man and that is the crux that is what is passed on to the mistress of spices she is not allowed to be touched by a man she's not allowed to fall in love with a man where does all of this actually take place it's magic realism buddy doesn't have to be an answer because we are now going to travel through time to america where Tilotama is to look after the spice shop and deal with the customers that come in, out and frequent the store. Harnessing the harmony of the spices, Tilotama is able to cure people with their ailments. 
one individual spice can solve one problem. And Tilatama tries to help the community be those issues of racism, of domestic abuse, of cultural conflict. But we're going to realise that one spice can't deal with the entire situation, the things are a bit more complex than that. And this is when metaphor can be used so simply but effectively that we're going to have the spice blend. We don't know everything that's going on within a spice blend. We can pick out certain individual aromas, colours, probably tastes, but the entirety of it we're not we're not really sure on. A spice blend doesn't come from easy means. Spices are ground, they are crushed, they are destroyed in order to give us their essence. And we'll see within this community that the violence and the transgression is not a melting pot of people, that we have a spice blend. I mentioned earlier on that this is a romance novel and that definitely takes its toll towards the latter pages of this novel and the love interest of whom we are not given his name. Nevertheless, let me tell you about this person. I think part Native American? I'm not entirely sure. People aren't binaries. They are complex. You add heritage, culture, social status, everything in. We're not even really told his skin colour. Although Tilutama thinks that he's white, but the love interest questions that notion. And we're not entirely sure who he is. We have situations here that have really clear answers and others where we think, well, should Tilutama step in and say something but again her crux is that she's not allowed to she doesn't at times and she bears with the consequences of it and is she going to go beyond her status is she going to go beyond her destination is she going to go beyond what she has to be the writing in here is absolutely superb it's lyrical at best, it is sumptuous, and for a book that heavily emphasises spices and tells you about them, each one feels fresh. Each one feels as though it's being presented to you. Again, the romance element to me does become a little bit too of a forefront towards the end. For me, this is a 7 out of 10. It's been a while since we've had a good book. I'm happy to say it was this one. And now it's time to buy the book that Chitra told me I should read first.